Good morning. Welcome to worship at Emmaus United Church of Christ. I'm Reverend Kristen McBrayer. And I am Minister Robert Bobby Faison. We want to apologize again this morning. Uh, our upload speeds on our internet are not where we had hoped they would be. And so, like last week, you may experience some slowdowns in our streaming. For that reason, we have decided to only stream on Facebook. The service will be uploaded to YouTube later this afternoon, and the quality of our video is going to be lower on Facebook to help get the word to you in as effective a way as technology will allow. So bear with us, we continue uh, to work to make this the best online worship experience that we possibly can. And we're grateful for all of the volunteers that continue to troubleshoot and to problem solve every week and during the week uh, to improve our online worship. Man, nonetheless, we still give thanks to God for the ability to connect today, even though we are physically apart. We invite you to post a comment in our Facebook feed so that we can lift one another in love this morning. If you have not done so already, I invite you to light a candle and to open your Bible to the book of Exodus, chapter 17. As we enter this sacred hour, take a deep breath in, breathing in God's Holy Spirit and centering ourselves in God's presence. Today we conclude our series from Exodus and our exploration of the Israelites' journey to freedom. This is a story of war, a story of fear, a story of labor, and in the end, a story of great reward. The Israelites continue to wander in the desert. They've been afraid. They've been hungry. And now they're thirsty. Where is God when they continue to suffer in the wilderness? Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain to let my people go who's that yonder dressed in black let my people go must be the hypocrites of turning back let my people go turning back go tell it on the mountain to let my people go go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain to let my people go amen as we move forward with our call to worship, this week has been filled with joys and sorrows. We have come here this day with burdens on our hearts. God, who hears our cries, will offer us healing love. Thanks be to God for such generous compassion. Open your hearts to God's infinite mercy. We open our spirits to receive God's love for the world. Amen. Will you pray with us? Oh, I'm sorry. Loving God, we come this day to worship with so many things on our hearts and minds. We are drawn away by problems and cares. Heal our spirits, open our hearts. Help us be your disciples as we pray. Holy God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beams of heaven as I go Through this wilderness of woe Guide my heart in peaceful ways Turn my midnights into days When in life shadows I would go Faith always finds a star of hope And soon from all life's grief and danger I shall be free someday. I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, shall get home someday. Amen. Amen. Good morning. This is a moment for our children, a time set aside for our children to open your ears and your hearts, especially because this story is for you. But we recognize that we are all children of God, and so there's a word for everyone here as well. So I want you to imagine for a minute that you are in the middle of a desert. You feel the sand between your toes, probably wearing sandals on your feet, and that sand just gets in there under your toes all around you and it's a little windy so the sand gets picked up and it gets stuck in your eyes and in your mouth and it's just kind of everywhere and now imagine that you're really tired because you've been walking not for hours but for days in the desert now you've camped in lots of different spots And one of them had a flowing stream that ran through it, kind of an oasis. And you remember that place with longing because you've been walking and there's no more water. Now, I've been thirsty before, but I don't think I've been that kind of thirsty where there's no water anywhere. You've used everything you have in your packs and there isn't any as far as the eye can see. And you're not just thirsty in your body, but your whole body feels caked with sand and dirt. And so it's just everywhere and you're longing so deeply just for a drink of water, right? We have the luxury in our lives when we're thirsty to know where to find water clean water for most of us pours out of the faucets, lots of faucets in our homes, and we can always get it when we're thirsty. But that's not how it was for the Israelites. They had been wandering in the desert for months, and they had run out of water, and there was none for them to find. And so they were so scared and so upset and so worried, they began to get angry with Moses and with God, and they started to complain Sounds kind of like our story that Minister Faison told from last week. Then they were hungry and they couldn't find enough to eat. And now they're thirsty and being thirsty feels even more dangerous because you know what? You can only live for three days without water. You could live for three weeks without food. It was a matter of survival that the Israelites 
found water. And so God provided water. It was a miracle. God sent Moses ahead to stand on a rock with his staff, the same staff that had parted the Red Sea. And Moses put that staff against the rock, and all of a sudden, a fount of clean water poured from the stone, and everybody had enough clean water to drink that their thirst was satisfied. You know, as I was wondering about this story, it reminded me that God is always with us. God is always there, even when we're angry, even when we're upset, even when we're suffering. God is there. You know, and I'm sure the Israelites couldn't feel God's presence. They were too scared and too worried. But God was there. And God found a way to meet the Israelites' need. Sometimes it doesn't happen when we want it to, or when we think it should, or in the way that we want it to, but our needs are met. God provides what we need. And so trust, just like the Israelites finally began to learn that God goes ahead of us and is waiting for us and meets our needs. And water is a gift that we need to cherish because it is what gives us life, just as God feeds our soul and nourishes our body. Amen. Amen. Will you open yourselves to the word of God from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted their water for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? May God add a blessing to the hearing of these words. Let us pray. Gracious and holy one, we give you thanks for your sacred stories, the stories of your people, of all of their experiences, their struggles, and their joys. We pray, O Holy One, that your wisdom might be found in their complaints. And so, Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today's scripture reminded me of the Bill Murray 1993 film, Groundhog's Day. When I sat down to read today's scripture, the story of the people's struggle in the wilderness, I did a little bit of a double take. Didn't we just do this? Didn't we just hear a story of the people stuck in the wilderness, complaining against Moses and God, wishing they were back in Egypt where their basic needs were met. Didn't we just finish blaming Moses for taking them into the desert where surely they would die? This week seems like a repeat, a do-over of what we heard last Sunday. Last week, the Israelites were complaining because their bellies were empty. 
They wanted to go back to Egypt where at least they had enough to eat. They were complaining to God and to Moses and God provided manna, bread from heaven. This week, the Israelites are complaining again. They're complaining because they are thirsty. Haven't the Israelites learned yet? God will provide. Debates continue about how many times that one Groundhog's Day repeated itself in that Bill Murray film. Some say Bill Murray's character repeated that faithful Groundhog's Day 38 or 44 or more times. The Israelites, it seem, are on track for a similar level of repetition. Stuck in the wilderness, wandering around until they reached the promised land again and again, they faced hardship and each time they became angry at Moses and began complaining to God. They began to complain. They grumbled and complained about their suffering and, and being, began to long for what was before they had fled from the land of Egypt. They're complaining about food and now water is just the beginning. They will complain about Moses' leadership, about food again, about water again, about how long the journey to the promised land is. And once they get on the edge of the promised land, they'll complain about how difficult it's gonna to be to enter. And the list goes on. The Israelites continue to face struggles on the journey and they respond. They respond with complaints and grumblings and laments to God and to Moses. UCC historian, theologian, and Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says that when people complain, they're hoping to mobilize Yahweh, God, to be Yahweh's best true self. Because people have a deep confidence that the God of the core testimony, the God that they believe in, can prevent and overcome such intolerable life experiences. If they didn't believe God could meet their needs, they'd stop complaining, Brueggemann says. Could this almost constant grumbling and complaining through the years in the wilderness be a sign of the Israelites' deep and steadfast faithfulness and trust in God to act? Could it be a sign of hope that the people hold for a different reality in the future? A few weeks ago at youth group, we began our time together with a question to spark conversation. If you could live one year as the best year in your life, doing everything that you loved, that brings you the absolute most happiness, but when that year was done, have no memory of it, would you take that chance? Sharing with his permission, Owen responded, it depends, is it the year 2020? This is a year many of us would not mind forgetting. This is a year that we wish could be different. Amen. Amen, you're right. Social media and late night comedy are filled with memes and jokes about 2020 being a year filled with bad news. Though clearly, the troubles that are shaking the foundation of our daily lives and maybe even our democracy did not start in 2020, far from it. The COVID-19 pandemic rages on and Governor Northam is among the newest to be diagnosed with the virus. The death toll has passed 200,000 and many predict it will surpass three or 400,000 before the year ends in the United States alone. The impact of the virus in the U.S. is among the worst in the world. The economy is gutted for many, if not most, and the financial fallout will continue for years to come. At the same time, a long overdue racial reckoning has emerged, as cell phone videos finally awaken the consciousness of a critical mass of Americans to the oppression and abuse of black and brown people that dates back to the founding of this nation. And if a health crisis and social upheaval were not enough, the cost of climate change is increasingly evident as our Western states are engulfed in raging wildfires and our Southern states are facing 
Some of the most powerful hurricanes we've seen, and not just one, but one after another continues to appear. Yep, 2020 is a year we could have done without. But here we are. As I sat with this scripture today, this week, it made me wonder, what do we need to hear again in this deja vu moment? The Israelites complained about being hungry and God provided food. And now they're complaining about being thirsty and God provided water. For me, and I hope for many of you, it's the reassurance that there is a role for us to lift our voices in lament, in grumbling and complaining to God and to our leaders when we experience or witness suffering, oppression, and injustice. Because clearly, as history has shown, complaining or grumbling once just isn't enough. Across Northern Virginia, we have been working for years to address injustices in housing. One of voice, Virginians organized for interfaith community engagement, a grassroots organizing faith community that we're a part of. One of voice's first big wins in 2008 when we were founded was around the housing crisis. That year in Prince William County, where far too many homes owned by African Americans were underwater. The amount of the loans those homeowners had far exceeded the value of their properties. After months of organizing and advocating, after countless power meetings, negotiating a deal that would relieve the suffering for so many, Voice won $250 million from the largest banks in our regions to help families facing foreclosures, and another $30 million for affordable housing and $3 million for grants. We won after lamenting and complaining about how unjust it was, and yet it wasn't enough. Fast forward to 2019, 2018, sorry. Through deep listening in that year, we learned that families across Northern Virginia, especially in our historically black neighborhoods in Fairfax, were at risk for losing their homes again. This time it was because their homes had be, been rezoned through development and their properties that had been in families for generations were now being taxed at rates that far outseed, exceeded what anybody would be able to pay. We began to complain and grumble again that black families were being pushed from their homes by a system that was set up to keep them down. At a 2018 voice action, a woman spoke about her own grandmother who was about to lose her home because of the taxes in McLean, just a couple miles from here. Things had changed just overnight, more than quadrupling their taxes on their family home. And her situation was not the only one we heard. And so we took our grumblings, we, we built our grumblings into a loud call for action. And the county responded by fixing the situation for that one person, rather than addressing the systematic injustice that had forced so many and continues to force so many from their homes. We continued to lament and complain and grumble. And now today, as a tsunami of evictions continues to ravage our state, we are complaining and grumbling and wailing loudly in lament that this isn't right. It's exhausting to continue to see the struggles again and again, to find a solution in one place, a victory in one challenge, only to have another, sometimes bigger challenge emerge. The Israelites were hungry, they were fed, and now they are thirsty. Something continues to come up to make the possibility of survival seem impossible. The wilderness is a hard place to be. They'd find a solution, and yet another challenge would appear. Like the Israelites, there is a place for us to complain and to grumble, because in our communi communal complaining and grumbling, we learn where the hardships are in our communities and in our lives. The deep hope in all of this is that when we come together and take our complaints to God, 
God goes ahead of us, just as God did for Moses. Scripture tells us that God went ahead to the rock and was there waiting for Moses when Moses arrived. God doesn't tell us when God will provide justice and freedom, but God reassures us that it is coming, that God goes ahead of us and is waiting for us there. May our complaints and grumblings be a testament to our hope. As Brueggemann says, may it be a sign of our deep confidence that God can overcome such intolerable life experiences. Let us rest reassured that God will provide someday that the world will be filled with justice and freedom for all God's people. As we pray together so often and already did this morning, holy God, may your kingdom come on earth. And until it does, O oh holy God, may we have the persistence and the patience and the courage to continue to journey through the wilderness periods of our life, supporting one another, caring deeply for our neighbors, and being instruments of God's peace and justice and love in the world. Amen. Amen. Sometimes in the campfire, sometimes in the songs, sometimes in the silence, sometimes in the fun. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere, open up our hearts to hear. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere, open up our hearts to hear. Sometimes like a picture, and sometimes like a word, sometimes like a knowing, sometimes like a bird. God's, God's voice, voice anywhere, God's, God's voice, voice everywhere, everywhere. open up our hearts to hear. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere, open up our hearts to hear. From the deep blue, sometimes from the book, sometimes like a slow dawn, sometimes thunderstruck. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up our hearts to hear. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up our hearts to hear. God's voice anywhere. Voice everywhere, open up our hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere, open up our hearts to hear. And so, friends, this is our time to share our grumblings and our complaints with one another, as well as our joys and our celebrations, to bring them all to God. And so we invite you, as you feel so moved, to put your comments, or put your prayers into our comments on our Facebook page, and we will do our best to lift them in love. We also invite you throughout the week to share your prayers to links at EmmausUCC.org, L-I-N-K-S at EmmausUCC.org. We trust and believe that God hears our prayers, opens our hearts, and brings healing into the world. And so we pray together throughout the week often about those joys and concerns that we hold in our hearts. And so what prayers do you have today? We'll respond to prayers of joy with praise God and to prayers of concern with Lord, hear our prayers. Barbers uh, raised one for Mike's brother, Gary, who is undergoing chemo. And also for uh, Lori, uh, for her friends, Connie and Bill. Uh, Bill suffered a heart attack last month, and Connie is in the hospital due to a drug reaction. 
Wow. Wow. Lori and Michael, Barbara, we lift you and your family in our prayers. We hold Gary, Michael's brother, who continues to live with cancer. We pray that the treatments might give him quality of life for all the months and weeks and years that he has left. We lift up Connie and Bill. Did I get that right? Ah, Connie and Bill, um, and all the medical challenges that they are facing right now, that they might feel God's healing in their lives. We say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. I'd like to raise a um, uh, contractor worker in a house quite a bit. His name is Michael, and he just found out he has throat cancer. And cancer mm. mm. Chip lifts up Michael, somebody who works often on their home, a friend. We lift up Michael, who was just diagnosed with throat cancer and is beginning chemo for healing to happen in his life, for him to find the wholeness that he needs to face what is coming. We lift him up as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Carmen is raising her, uh, her friend Sue, whose daughter is getting treatment for an aggressive cancer. We lift up Carmen's friend Sue, whose daughter is facing aggressive cancer that she too might find healing and wholeness in these challenging times. We lift her up as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Ava Neff is uh, asking for prayers for her son-in-law, Wade, who must pass a kidney stone. Ooh. We lift up um, Ava's uh, son-in-law, Wade, as he is facing kidney stones and the pain that goes along with that. We lift him up as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Uh, Carrie Christopherson is uh, asking for prayers for the family, friends and family of Jean, an amazing colleague and fighter for freedom and equality, who died this week at the age of 93. Mm. Mm. Oh. Wow. Oof. We lift up Carrie's friend and colleague, Jean, who died of COVID after a full life dedicated to justice and news awareness. Um, for all of us to know what's happening in the world at age 93, a full life, a life well lived and yet cut short by a pandemic. We lift up Jean and her friends and family, his friends and family, her friends, well, Jean's friends and family, um, in all the ways that Jean touched so many, as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers, and we celebrate a life well lived, as we say, praise, praise God. God. Yeah, we lift up Rashida, who received a kidney transplant for the donor and the donor's family, for the friends and family of Rashida and all of those who came together to care for her and for the donor. We lift them all up and ask for continued healing and blessing as we say, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Mm. I would also add that my uh, cousin just had a baby girl three huh. weeks ago. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Great we, we celebrate, as Dawn said, uh, for all of the babies that remind us of hope for the future mm -hmm. uh, and bring joy in the celebration of new life and Chip's niece. Cousin. Cousin's niece. Cousin's daughter. Cousins are new family, new family, and the joy that it brings in the smiles of a baby, in their tiny little toes, all that they bring to us. We celebrate new life as we say, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, two related uh, prayers. Uh, memory is asking for prayers for a peaceful election and its aftermath, and uh, Arn uh, followed that with thankful for, for democracy as we lift up our democracy, pray for a peaceful election, and for all of those who are casting their votes, that they might do so safely yes, Lord. and with, with just honor, without being turned away, without being harassed on their way to the polls, without hardship in getting there, with, without struggle that our democracy might be practiced freely and openly. We pray in this moment 
for that gift of democracy that has been given to us and that it might continue as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Oh. Mm. To be pregnant and positive with COVID must be terrifying. For uh, Ken Spokus's coworker, Amy, Sammy. Sammy, Amy, yeah. For, for Sammy and his family, their two year old, his wife, and the new baby, and all of them as they're living with the COVID virus, may healing and wholeness surround them and courage in the midst of such uncertainty. We lift them up as we say together. Lord, hear our prayers. I want to um, lift up one additional, um, one of my childhood friends of 40 plus years, mm. um, she lost her husband last week due to COVID. Mm. Um, so uh, her name is, uh, her married name is Tracy Thor, Thor. so Thor. the Thor family. The Thor family. Mm. We lift up Tracy and her family as they grieve the loss of her husband from COVID for all of those who are grieving and wondering what might have been. We lift them up as we say together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Freddie, you want to share a prayer, Freddie? Okay. Marsha, you want to share a prayer? Yeah. Amen. I was going to share it later, but we're also another joy is that we learned that uh, ah. Reverend Memory had c celebrates over 35 years of ministry. Reverend Memory, I don't remember your last name, but McKay I know Cook. it. McKay Cook. McKay Cook. So we, uh, we celebrate your and congratulate you on 35 yeah. years of ministry. Yeah. And all the lives that you uh -huh. have touched memory. What a joy and a celebration. So we celebrate with Marsha and Jean Fox, who attended the Central Atlantic Conference's annual meeting this weekend, digitally, of course, um, and all the ways that uh, the United Church of Christ in the Central Atlantic Conference continues to be the church. God uh, didn't close, the, the church didn't close in the wake of the pandemic. Instead, God opened the church in new ways. And so it is and it will be. We continue to be the church and we give thanks for those who invested their weekend in mm -hmm. our representing Emmaus at the Central Atlantic Conference and our presence and all that they will share with the church. Um, we give thanks and for memory and her uh, life in ministry, all the lives she's touched, we celebrate her gifts as we say together for all of it, praise, praise God. God. <laughs> Yeah, I celebrate with Sarah the opportunity to pack meals um, for Rise Against Hunger. We learned our meals from last year went to Madagascar, and we'll uh -huh. wait to see where this year's meals go. Um, 40 people from Vienna Baptist and Emmaus in two different physically distanced mask wearing shifts in a large warehouse packed 10,000 meals um, for uh, refugee and emergency ministries around the world. Um, it was a joy to be there and a, a wonderful opportunity for Emmaus to continue to sort, support that ministry. And so we say together, praise, praise God. God. At the same time, my heart was broken when I was there and learned that usually by this time in the year, this one office for Rise Against Hunger would have packed four million meals. And this year, they've just passed one million. Mm. And I think about all of the people in our world now who are already suffering as refugees or in the face of national disaster where these meals go who are going to now be hungry. And that's just one office. The needs are growing. And I pray that we will find more ways to respond in the midst of this. And so we pray for all of those who are hungry as we say, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. One final joy, if I may. Um, praise God for a wonderful in-person Sunday school this morning. Yeah. We had, I believe it was 12, well, 
I'll talk more about it later, but the joy is that we had a great Sunday school this morning. To hear children laughing on our campus brings us joy, and it is the voice of God comes through in our children's laughter. And so we say together, praise, praise God. God. And so let us take all of our prayers, our joys, and our concerns to the Holy One. Let us pray. For as sure as there is God, there is hope. Mm. So God, thank you already for reminding us even today that there is still hope because you are still God. You show us hope, Lord God, in all the babies mm. that have been born in 2020. You show us hope in the laughter that we heard from our very own children this morning, God. You show us hope, God, that we still can come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. You show us hope, Lord God, that you have not forsaken us, that you have not left us, even in the midst of grumbling, even in the midst of complaining, even in the midst of perhaps even disobedience, you still show us hope because you still extend your love toward each of us, God. So we thank you for the hope that we have in you through Christ Jesus. And God, as we pray today, you know that there are hearts that are heavy today. God, you know that there are some that are grieving the loss of the 90 plus year old person. You know that there are some that are heavy hearts this morning, Lord God, as they deal with the diagnosis of COVID-19. Some are even dealing with the transition of a loved one, of a coworker, of a friend, of an associate because of COVID-19. So God, we lift those individuals before you in prayer, asking that you will comfort them as only you can, as you would go in and to encourage them to lift up their bowed down head, even mm -hmm. in this situation and circumstance. God, we thank you that you are still God, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of struggle. God, we lift up those, Lord God, that are dealing with hunger. God, we thank you that you have provided for us, Lord God, but we also recognize that there are so many others who are struggling to figure out where their next meal will come from, struggling to figure out where they will get clean water, safe water, mm -hmm. Lord God, struggling to figure out how they'll pay whatever bills that they may have before them. But God, even in the midst of that, you are a God of hope, that you will make a way, that you will open a door, that you will open a window, that you will send someone across someone's path to be mm -hmm. a word of encouragement, to provide resources for them, even in the midst of all of this. So God, we trust you. Thank you that you hear our voices, even when we complain, even when we lament, even when we bring our stuff before you, that you hear our voice. And just as you showed us in your word today, sometimes you even go out ahead of us to meet the situation or circumstance. So God, we trust you to go out ahead of us, even in what we're dealing with in this season, as a church, as individuals, as families, God. And God, we will always give you the praise, always give you the glory and the honor because it belongs to you anyway. Mm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So indeed, we have come to the time where we can continue to worship God through our giving. We are just so excited this morning that as we receive our, our offerings this morning, know that your money is being used for the fulfillment of what God has called Emmaus UCC to do in this season. As I mentioned a moment ago, we had a great Sunday school, in-person Sunday school this morning. We had 12 children, we had four, uh, two teachers, two shepherds, and then a host of parents that were here to provide support in the moment. And we did it safely. We did it physically distanced. We did it wearing face masks. So we want to continue to be about doing what God is calling us to do, not only for the adults, not only for our mature adults, but also for our young people. Some people have said that the chil that children are for tomorrow. I say that the children are for today. So we're encouraging you that even through your giving, however God has blessed you, however God is directing you, be faithful in giving to what God is calling you to do as a member, as a friend of Emmaus UCC. Um, in order to give, uh, there is a link that's on our Facebook page. You can give there. You can also send your gifts, uh, your offerings to the church here at 900 Maple Avenue East in, in wow, Vienna, God. Virginia as well. <laughs> but again, be faithful to what God is calling you to do. Be faithful in worshiping God, even through your giving. Amen. Amen.
Holy One, each of us is a fragile miracle, evidence of God's creative hand and amazing grace. We are each unique, unrepeatable gifts to the world. We are proof of God's love. And so we who are the gifts of creation now give gifts to our creator. Gifts brought in love. Amen. 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 So there is much happening in the life of the church, in the life of Emmaus, and we invite you to be a part of it. Um, there's opportunities for people to be a part of worship where you're doing it as safely and carefully as we possibly can. And if you'd like to offer your gifts, please be in touch with me or with Barbara um, Johns Johnson uh, via her email address and worship lead. Uh, we invite you to join us. Uh, we give thanks and gratitude for all of the volunteers who participated in Rise Against Hunger and all of those who donated um, money to help us reach our goal, um, over $3,000, uh, to make sure that we had the money to buy those meals and feed 10,000 people. A reminder that the sanctuary is open on Thursdays from 11 to 1. You're invited to come wearing a mask and stay physically distanced to offer your prayers in your own guided meditation with God. And next Sunday, we are doing something a little bit different. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday, and Emmaus will be joining with 15 other churches, or maybe it's 14 plus us, but either way, it's a lot of churches coming together to celebrate World Communion Sunday. So you will join us the same way at 1030 via Facebook, but it's going to look really different because it's a, a service that's a combination of 15 different churches sharing their voices together in one service, celebrating God's grace and mercy in our lives. And so we invite you to join us in that. And then we hope to see many of you either um, digitally or in person for the crop walk. We will be meeting at CHO um, over on Park Street um, at two o'clock to walk, um, wearing a mask physically distanced, or you're invited to join our team digitally and then walk on your own whenever you feel called to do so and post your picture there so that we can be connected in this opportunity to find ways to feed more of those hungry people around the world and bring justice to a world where justice is needed. And so we thank you. And, and finally, we wanna thank those of you who have been participating in our Sunday School program. We pray that the materials have been a blessing to you that you've been getting in the email. We thank you for those of you that were here this morning. We want your feedback. So please make sure you reach out to me, uh, reach out to April Cullen or anyone that you know that's connected with our Sunday School program. Please give us your feedback. We want to know if this is working. Because if it's working, we want to continue to move forward in something similar. If it's not working or if you have uh, ideas of how we can improve um, our Sunday School program, please let us know. We want to be here to be a blessing to you. Um, there will be a Zoom meeting that we're going to look at having um, this week so that the leaders can gather together to discuss how things are going so far so we can move forward on what we want to do next in regards to our Sunday School program. So thank you to each of you for your participation and we look forward to receiving your feedback. There's no, um, we've always done it this way in the middle of a pandemic. So tell us, share your feedback, not just about Sunday school, but also worship, everything. We are here um, to be in ministry with you. So we welcome your feedback and suggestions. And now friends, live your life knowing that God loves you just the way you are. Not shiny and new and perfect and whole, but open and honest and vulnerable. When you share that part of you with another, you will discover the power of the resurrected Christ all over again. So go and make firm the foot of one who has stumbled. Go and give sight to one who has gone blind to the beauty of this world. And go knowing that the love of God goes with you and is within you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain over